Spring Dynamics, um, a little bit of espresso. Don't worry about that. It's super simple. Let me show you how in this tutorial. So all I've done here is I've just um, put a quick box together with a graphic on and a little handle that I've I'm spinning it with a vibrate tag and I'm probably gonna to have to show you that in another video unless you know how to use those um, really nice just to quickly drop that on and things will spin so I'll show you that in another video this is all about the spring so we've got the head and we've got the box and if we press play the handle goes round um, the lids close look and the, and the lid goes like that but we want the head to pop out don't we on the spring that's what jack-in-the-box does so how do we do that how do we get a spring in here and have this head ping up in the air right we need to use some force dynamics which are under simulate dynamics and we need to use a spring and we need to use back to dynamics a connector okay so what we're going to do we're going to take the head which i've got in this group and we're going to take it out like that and then we're just going to close this jack-in-the-box um, down so we're just going to deal with these pieces so what we're going to need is another cube which we're going to have quite a lot smaller let's have it 20 by 20 by 20 and let's turn off the jack-in-the-box box for now because we're just dealing with this this bit here aren't we so we've got a box actually let's just pop that back on because i just want to see where that box sits okay that's fine that's in there that'll be absolutely fine right so what we're going to do is we're just going to line this this box roughly up underneath the head like that so it just sits there yeah, that'll be fine and, and what we're going to do now is we're going to connect the head to this this box using a spring and a connector so what we do is we click on spring we keep it on linear and object a is the head now if we actually put the cube underneath here this is the order it runs in so you've got the head connector spring and then cube at the bottom so it's just easy when you're run, running through these so you go head at the top cube at the bottom like that and you see on the screen here that we've got this spring that's jumped between the head now and the cube now with the connector this will stop the, the the spring kind of flopping over this will keep it upright so what we're going to do is put on the connector here where it says type we're going to call this the slider we're going to use a slider which will be vertical and then the head will just stay on this slider on the spring so what we do is we constrain this to 90 degrees with a shift key held down like that so it's completely going straight up um, and then again with the connector we do the same thing in object a we put the head and in object b we put the cube okay so it's going to link these two together now if we just press play now we don't get anything happen and the reason for that is we need to put a dynamic rigid body tag on the head we want the head to have gravity weight being supported by a spring so we right click on head go to simulation tags and add a rigid body right now the springs disappeared but that's only because we if we click on it and we want to see it at all times we go to display and say always visible right I don't really want to see the connector because that's just another kind of bit of geometry in the way of what we're trying to see so I'm, I'm quite happy to see the spring at this stage now if we just go back to the start and then we press play can you see that it's actually springing okay so it's it's holding the weight now but the spring needs to be it needs to kind of go up really high and then kind of bounce for a bit doesn't it because it's going to be compressed in this box and then when the lid opens it's going to go flying up in the air and then kind of bounce and bounce like that so what we do is we want two positions for this spring recorded okay so we want the one when it's compressed and then we want the one when it's gone up to its highest point so what we do on under spring if we go to object just here look we've got this rest length right so that's the the length that is resting at after the spring's done all of its bouncing it will stop so 
at 100, it's sitting down there. Now, if we just turn the box back on, we want to be a little bit lower because his head's poking out the top, okay? So if we go to, let's go back to the beginning. Um, now, actually, let's just have a look. Oh uh, yeah, we see he, start, he, he pops up <laughs> through the lid. So what we need is if we come down to, let's just try 80, and then let's record this key frame here, okay? And let's just see where we get now. Okay, don't worry about the little bit, because I think once we render, uh, sorry, once we um, cache this, it probably won't do that. So what we've got is, yeah, let's just go down a little bit more. Let's, let's say 70, let's just, just to make sure. And then we'll record, sorry, that didn't record. 70, record, and that records the first keyframe. So right back at zero on the, on the timeline. And then we record that at 70. Okay, so that pops up, and now we want him to now pop up at this point, don't we? At the point when that lid just opens there, he needs to be popping up. So at this point, what we do on the rest length of the spring is we bring this up to say, nah, before we do that, we need to record, we need to record a position about here at 70. Okay, because it's, it's basically going to stay at 70. He's going to be held at that position and then just as the lid comes up it's going to go from 70 and it's going to jump up okay if we had 70 at zero and then we brought say the timeline to 60 and put a bigger number it would gradually move up so he'd gradually start to come out the box so we don't want that we want it to be held at 70 so he's like keeping his head down at 70 and then at that point we're then going to have it quickly go up Okay, so we're 70 there. We then go forward, say a couple of frames, and then we record it again, let's say 300, and hit a record keyframe. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so that is the action we want. We could probably even go higher. We can probably have him just jump. That's not too bad, is it? All right, and you see the way it just goes up and then just has that nice little bounce. That's down to the stiffness. So if you, we've got a stiffness of one, which is about right, and dampening of 20. If you bring the stiffness up, he will be more like that, okay? So I think with the jack in the box, you want him to just kind of bounce, don't you? So we'll leave it at one, and we'll leave the dampening at 20. Now, there's an issue with this, as we are. I mean, it looks okay here, but if you try and render this, I don't know if we've got any lights in the scene. Let's just put a physical sky in just so we've got some light. Now let's render that. Where's the spring? This is the problem, you see. The, the, the spring dynamics, the force part of the spring, does the calculations for the springy bit, but it doesn't do the geometry. You can't see it in the scene. So we need to create a spring and then attach it somehow to this spring to give you the geometry. Right, let's try and do this. I think we're gonna go over four minutes, but this is quite a good one to have the spring. So what we do, let me just get on and do it. We need to choose a helix, okay? And that's gonna be the wrong way around, like it always is. Let's turn off the physical sky so you can see what I'm doing. So there's the helix. Let's get it on the X, Z, or Z axis if you're British. Um, and then let's bring the start radius and end down to 20 and 20. Um, let's turn off the box for a minute so we can see the spring. Okay, let's go to these different views so we can make sure we get it roughly in the right place. Right, now we need to lift the height of the spring up, which is height just here, because we're gonna go up like that to the top of the head. And then let's have a loads and loads more. Um, if we can really increase the end angle, we can we can make ourselves a really nice looking spring, you know, like proper coils on it, rather than just a really open one. We want loads of coils. So at this point, we can now turn off the other spring because we'll have too many springs on on display soon. So we just want that one, yeah. Now this is the one that's going to draw. Now we need to add a sweep nerb to this so we can sweep a a circle around that. Let's put the circle in at about one and let's drop the circle 
and the helix in the sweep nub and that will give us an actual physical spring. So if we render that, we've now got a spring. But what we haven't got, if we turn it all back on, what we don't have at this point, if we go back, is the spring connected. So he'll jump out, but the spring's not attached to him. So how do, you, how do we get that spring to attach to that other force spring that we have there? Right, this is what we do. We have to use a tiny, tiny little bit of Espresso, really simple, couple of nodes, and we just link them together and this will work. So I'll show you that now. If we go to Helix and we right click and we go to Program Tags, Espresso. What we need to do is drop the Helix into here and we need to drop the head into here, the, the um, Jack in the Box's head. Right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna record the position of the, the where the head is in relation to the height of the spring at all times. So how we do that is we go on the red part here and we go to coordinates position, okay? And then we drag this little wire out from the circle to the blue and we let go. And then we go to object properties and select height. And as you can see over here now, the spring's disappeared, okay? Because what it's done is it's matched the height of the helix to where the head position is going to be, right? So if you have a look, if we just close Espresso now, that's all we need it for. If we now press play, I'm hoping this is going to work. If we press play now, out he pops, okay? And it just bounces around on that spring. So I'm not going to let this video go on any longer. I think you've got what you need to do there. If you just want to texture everything now, add you know some nice textures to the spring itself it's going to be fine but if you render that the spring will be in place and it will work and it will bounce around absolutely fine if you enjoyed it please hit the the mic the like button below like the mic hit the like button it's never going to catch on um anyway yeah hit the like button if you enjoyed that i can then make more of these videos and i would just keep posting them out just for you yeah i think we can cut there